Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Bully the Board channel. We are discussing the top 25 matchups for Saturday, March 2nd in college basketball. We're going to break down some of these games using the Ken Palm predictions, picks, and analysis to kind of spit out what we're thinking of some good bets and hopefully make you more informed. We're going to take some action on some of these games. So without further ado, let's kind of get started and hop into this. So I want to start real quick by giving you some background, kind of how we run things here. So you're going to see this sort of uh, matchup map, as we call it, or if I just see landscape. And really just to orient you, you got four quadrants here that we care about. The top right quadrant are teams that are good on offense and on defense. You can see here on the x-axis, this is the adjusted offensive efficiency, which we'll talk about a little bit more. We look into the actual matchups, but essentially this is just saying how many points per possession are these teams scoring? And then on the y-axis over here, you have adjusted defensive efficiency, meaning how many points are these teams giving up? per possession and so if the further to the right you are the more points you score on offense the further to the left you are uh the fewer points you score on offense the closer to the top you are the fewer points you give up on defense and the closer to the bottom you are the more points you give up on defense so again just to reorient you top right corner is good offense and good defense this is where you want to be we call this the quadrant of elites Bottom left corner is bad offense and bad defense. We call this the quadrant of woe. You do not want to be here. And then these other two quadrants are just trade offs. So, top left are teams that are good on defense, but bad on offense. And then the bottom right is teams that are good on offense, but bad on defense. All right. So, hopping into this, the next big thing we want to talk about is what are we actually looking at when we give these game breakdowns? So, if you have not heard, uh, you actually you probably heard everyone's probably heard of Ken Palm, right? Ken Pomeroy, he's the 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 the, the former weatherman turned uh, statistical guru when it comes to college basketball. But so he, when you ever hear people say Ken Palm stats, they're you they're actually looking at his adjusted efficiency metrics or other metrics that he puts out there. But essentially, that his his king stat is the adjusted efficiency metric, which is what this map is. Now, with that being said, that is just uh, an actual combination of four metrics from another guy named Dean Oliver, who wrote this whole book about what are actually the four most important statistical factors in winning the basketball game. And so in order of importance, his four factors are uh, scoring or shooting the ball, turnovers, rebounding, and free throw. So we call those the four factors. So when we look into these matchups, we're going to look at both these teams from an overall Ken Palm efficiency landscape, but then also how do they actually break down on the four factors. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at this. So the first top 25 matchup, and just to clarify, these are the matchups where both teams are ranked in the, the top 25. So we've got Florida versus South Carolina. So just kind of orient you again. We've got Florida down here. This is a good offense, bad defense team, ever so barely, just slightly below average on defense versus South Carolina, who was a little worse, a little below average on offense, but good on defense. So their classic good offense versus good defense matchup was well, going to win. Now, if we look over at the Ken Palm prediction, Ken Palm has South Carolina um, actually winning this game by two uh, at home. Now, South Carolina is coming off a pretty good win over Texas A&M. And so if we kind of break this down real quick, you can see that even though Florida is a higher ranked team per Ken Palm metrics, um, he does have South Carolina winning at home. And that's been a theme here. I don't know why. I haven't actually quantified this yet, but we have seen a lot, and I think more so than other years, right, where you have these good teams and especially ranked teams going on the road and losing to, you know, quote unquote, inferior opponents or opponents who were ranked lower than them. Now, again, if you're looking at, the, you know, the AP poll top 25, South Carolina is a higher ranked team, but look, the Ken Palm ranking Florida actually is the higher ranked senior. So that that would uh that would qualify here. All right. So kind of breaking down, um, we're gonna go through the four factors again. So the first factor, remember, is scoring. So that's adjusted offensive and defensive efficiency. And all this means is how many points per possession is a team scoring or giving up, right? And so you can see here Florida has the edge, which kind of makes sense if we see down here. They have the edge on offense scoring 1.2 points per possession versus South Carolina's 1.14. Now that's pretty close here. You know, typically you're looking at a game, you know, can this have 60 to 70 possessions somewhere in that ballpark? So you can see how even a little bit of separation can play out. But uh, I mean, these two teams are pretty close there. And then you look on the defensive side of the ball, you know, these are two teams that again are, are a little more close than, you know, this might suggest looking just at the map here. You can see Florida at 1.02 points 
per possession that they're giving up versus South Carolina is just under a point per possession at 0.99. So you've got, again, you've got Florida with the better offense, South Carolina with the better defense, what's going to win out. All right. Now going back to uh, the four factors, right? So remember uh, the adjusted efficiency, uh, this is looking at shooting, but this is actually Ken Palm's number combining all four of these factors. So Looking at the four-factor breakdown, the first one is effective field goal percentage. And this is so important because it's not just regular field goal percentage. And what this means is effective field goal percentage takes into account twos and threes, right? And so an example would be if you had two teams, right? Team A goes five from 10 from the field, but they scored or they only, they only shot two pointers, right? They would have scored 10 points, right? Five, two pointers, five times two is 10. Now, if team B goes five for 10 from the field, but they had three three-pointers in there, right? While team A scored 10 points, team B actually scored 13 points, right? So three threes, that's nine. And the two twos, that's four. So nine plus four is 13. So even though both these teams had a 50% field goal percentage, right? Team B scored more points because obviously three points count more than two points. And so that's why effective field goal percentage is so important in trying to assess these teams. So if you look down here on the offensive side of the ball, again, you see these two teams are pretty close. Florida 51.34, South Carolina 51.18. But then you start to see where teams this kind of edges out where South Carolina, again, is better on defense. And this time more so than just the marginal, they're kind of the same. Uh, looking at uh, almost two percentage points lower or better defensive side of the ball. So uh, that's probably where this edge is likely coming from. All right, next important thing is turnovers. Can these teams take care of the ball? You can see here, both these teams have about a 16% turnover rate on offense, and they're both causing about 14.9% turnovers on defense. So to me, that's that's a draw. That's an absolute draw. All right, offensive rebounding. This is where Florida, if they're going to pull an upset, this is where they can do it, right? So the offensive rebounding, you see Florida here, 39.4% versus South Carolina, 33%. So second chance points can absolutely be a huge thing in keeping the, uh, a team alive. And so if Florida, if you're looking to back Florida, that's probably the angle you want to you wanna put your, uh, your hat on. And then lastly, or actually let's start real quick, defense. Uh, again, pretty much the same, 28.9 versus 27.5, slight edge to Florida on the glass both ways. So again, if you're looking for that angle, that's where I will look at if you're looking for Florida upset here. And then finally, the free throw rate. Now, free throw rate um, is not the percentage of free throws they make. When we say free throw rate, we mean how often are they getting to the line? So what percentage essentially of their drives are, or, or what percentage of their field goal attempts end in uh, free throws, right? So can they get to the hole? Can they get and ones um, or two point you know, free throw attempts? And this again is where you can see, now this is pretty interesting. So Florida does have the advantage here. They are about 36% offensive free throw rate compared to South Carolina. So they get into the line more. But interestingly enough, Florida is one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the country. Um, and so it's something to keep an eye on there. So if you look um, there, their free throw percentage is like 69.2 as a team, which Ken Palm has them ranked like 288th out of like 353 schools, uh, D1 schools. So something to keep in mind. Of, so even though Florida is getting to the line more, they're not really – converting there or at least not converting at the rate they should be as you'd expect an average team to do or definitely not at the rate that an elite team would uh, and then lastly th defensive free throw rate so how often are teams sending the other team or allowing the other team to go to the line and you can see here south carolina is better and this time lower is better because it's defense right um versus florida which is that 33 versus south carolina is essentially 31 so uh, again, Ken Palm has this as a uh, two-point game here. If you're looking right now, we're recording this on Friday night. So here, let me pull up unabated the odd screen now. So you can see this top row. Um, if you can find a one and a half, you can see one and a half at FanDuel for minus 118 and a one and a half at ESP and bet at minus 115. If you can get that, especially at minus 110, that's a huge EV bet. It's about 1.65% expected value. But yeah, if you can get that, those lines, uh, 1.5, a minus 1.5 for uh, South Carolina, you're, you're, you're definitely looking good. Now, if you're looking to back Florida um, and you're trusting Ken Palm's number, you know, you definitely want to look for a line at least plus two, uh, see maybe you can get a plus two and a half in the market. Currently, there are none there. Oh, I, actually, I said it back. BetMGM has a plus two and a half. 
uh, at minus 115. So just remember, you have options there. Hopefully, you live in state. We have multiple sportsbook options. And if you do, definitely price shop. That is the biggest thing you can do, depending no matter what bet you're taking, no matter who you're looking to back, always price shop. You can definitely find some value there. Okay, next up we have Kansas versus Baylor. And again, just to look at here on the map, you've got Baylor, the best offense in the Big 12, statistically speaking, going up against Kansas, which is, again, one of those teams where, you know, they're kind of right on average in terms of offense, but they hang their hat on defense. So once again, good offense versus good defense. I would dare say great offense versus good defense. What's going to happen here? So going back over, you see the Ken Palm prediction as Baylor winning 76 to 71. Um, and Baylor, again, another example of even though in the top 25, Baylor or Kansas is ranked higher uh, for the poll, Ken Palm has Baylor ranked higher than Kansas. So another one of those flip-flop positions. So what are we looking out here? Uh, let's go back to this again, again, break this down by the four factors. You've got first off the offensive efficiency, Baylor coming in at 1.23 points per possession versus Kansas 1.0 or 1.15, excuse me. And then again, Kansas has the better defense holding opponents under a point per possession while Baylor is right there at a, a point per possession. Um, what's going to separate these two though, is going to be right here. So again, the offensive effective field goal percentage at 56.22 giving the edge to kansas while kansas has the edge again there on defense now i want to say one thing about the scoring it will big injury to watch out for in this game is going to be kevin mccullers uh last i heard there was still some will he won't he in terms of will he be back to play in this game he's missed the last two games through the injury uh bill self seemed to hint that if he could have a couple of good practices he would, uh, you know, suit up. But at the time of this recording, I have not seen anything else. So if you want to be a, a backer of Baylor or Kansas, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, you know, that that could be a potential swing one way or the other. And so if you're going to um, hopefully by the time you see this, uh, you can kind of stalk the news line, see if you can get some breaking information before the lines at the retail books change or, you know, uh, react accordingly uh, before it's out too long. So, uh, again, turnover percentage, you can see here on the offense, uh, Baylor turns the ball over a little bit more than Kansas, while uh, they are I, Baylor causes a, a slight edge and, and causing turnovers to 17.8 percent versus uh kansas is 17.1 and so um, again it goes back to who's going to crash this board who's going to win the rebounding battle and get second chance points and i think that's where baylor has the huge edge here you can see here at 35.36 uh offensive rebounding percentage they are blowing kansas out of the water who's averaging close to 26 percent so Offensive office rebound, second chance points. Um, we talk about that all the time. And then same thing on the defensive board. They are giving up or they're getting more rebounds, Baylor is, than Kansas. So if they can dominate the board, it's going to be a long, long day for Kansas on the road. And then finally, the free throw rate. You can see here that Baylor is getting to the line at a higher clip than Kansas, 30, essentially 40 percent uh, versus Kansas 33. Uh, but on the flip side, Kansas is really good at not sending folks to the line comparatively. You got 29.1 versus Baylor's 31.8, uh, 31.8. Yeah. Um, a defensive free throw rate percentage. So you're looking at all these things in terms of four factors. You know, it looks like it's going to be the shooting and the rebounding that are significantly in Baylor's favor, according to Ken Palm statistics. And that's where I'm, I'm predicting. And I'm, I'm predicting that he's predicting that Baylor is going to uh, win this game out. So again, at the time of this recording, we can look through and see what the current spreads are. You have here, uh, you can get, if you're going to be a backer of Baylor, you can actually get them as low as minus four and a half at minus 115 looks like at bet MGM. So they have some sleepy lines. I would definitely try to hop on that if that's still available. And then if you're looking to back Kansas here, looks like best line is uh Caesars plus six at minus 110. And, and so, you know, one of the questions we get all the time is, you know, what's a good line or what's a good price for uh, expected value, right? And so if you go to our website, we have these EV calculators. Again, these are just expected value calculators. And you can see here, if you can get a minus four and a half and you believe Ken Palm's number of minus five, then this is a 0.61% uh, EV, positive EV bet. And again, EV is EV. You definitely want to get that positive EV wherever you can. But if this moves to minus 115, you can see there that's a negative EV bet. So the price absolutely matters. So depending on when you're seeing this or really any bet that you have 
a line that you trust as your sort of, you know, true prediction, whether it's Ken Palm or Bartovic or, you know, anyone else, um, you can definitely come to our website, bullytheboard.com and um, pull this into the, the calculator and see if that's a positive or a negative EV bet. Um, again, if we flip this around and said, hey, we want to take Baylor at plus six and they are plus five um, per Ken Palm's prediction, you can see here that, um, that's a negative EV bet. We do have real quick, you can see there's two EV lines, one without regression and one with regression. Regression just means, you know, we believe that the market knows more than we do. And because you have all these other people who are playing their information into the bets, right? And so that includes sharp betters. And so sometimes you're looking at, you know, people who have better angles, information, or modeling capabilities than you who are influencing the line. And so we want to kind of not deviate too far from the market number um, because we don't want to ignore like if the market's telling you that you think a team's going to win by 10 and the market spread is minus two it's far more likely that you're missing something than the other way around especially as the markets mature as we get closer to the tip off so uh, the regression we just regress 75 percent to the line so this is the it's just the kind of a a modeling sort of um uh, standard, if you will, in terms of, of kind of how the sharp betters go about um, doing that. And that's definitely what we aspire to be. So we're learning those practices as well. All right. So that is where we stand with that. And then we're going to move on to the next matchup, which is going to be uh, Creighton versus Marquette. Okay. So Marquette versus Creighton. Um, you can see here. <clears throat> All right, you can see here that these are again, again, two teams in the quadrant of elite out in the Big East. Uh, strength on strength, uh, no weaknesses here. Both teams have great offense. Uh, both teams have great defense. Uh, and you look over here because I want to point out real quick. So the adjusted offensive efficiency, right? So points per possession, one point one nine and one point two for Marquette and Creighton, respectively. We think about these teams, or at least I think about these teams, and I think good offense, right? These teams can put up points. But the defense, I feel like, is an underrated part of both these teams' games. You can see Marquette here at 0 0.95 and Creighton at a very similar 0.97 uh, points per possession allowed. And just to put that into perspective, when you talk about, like, where does that rank, uh, you know, nationally, Creighton is 20, that's a 23rd best Ken Palm defense. And, or excuse me, Creighton is the 15th best Ken Palm defense, and Marquette is the 23rd best Ken Palm defense in the nation. So these two teams are, are no slouch. And just to put this into perspective, the, these are these are going to be hard-fought games. These two teams are really good on both sides of the ball. So where do you find this edge at? You come down to the offensive effective field goal percentage, and that's going to be something to watch out for. Now, real quick, want to make sure you are aware, if you're looking at betting on this game, Make sure to do a status update to see what Tyler Kolek's injury status is. Will he play or not? He got hurt in that Providence game. He has an oblique uh, injury that they're they're speculating. And, and as the time of this recording, I have not seen any news confirming that he's going to play in this game. He's a major contributor. Uh, per a Ken Palm metric, that means you have someone who contributes more than 24% of the possessions used. That's where Kolek falls into. So please make sure to double check that uh, before you bet on this game. Uh, but with that being said, you know, kind of going back to looking at these two teams here, um, you know, the offensive effective field goal percentage uh, is where Creighton has an ever so slight um, uh, edge there. And if you look at the three point percentage, um, Creighton is shooting about 36.4% beyond the three as a team, while Marquette is at 35.5. So again, these two teams here are, are pretty, pretty neck and neck, uh, no matter how you split this. Um, looking at turnovers, again, pretty similar there, 14.8 versus 15.4. Um, the defensive side of the ball, though, this is where Marquette can cause some disruption, uh, causing turnovers at a 22% clip versus uh, Creighton has a defensive turnover percentage of 11.35. And then finally, looking at rebounding and free throw rate, you can see here again, offensive rebounds, 27.14 to 26.5. So these teams are, are, are pretty even on the offensive side of glass. Marquette is getting a, a better rebounding percentage on the defensive side of that uh, the glass, so really limiting those second chance points. And then finally, the free throw rates. Uh, you can see here again, pretty similar on the offensive end of getting to the line. And then on the defensive side, Creighton does a much better job at not sending their opponents to the free throw line. So looking at all this, Ken Palm has Creighton winning 77 to 73. 
quite frankly, I I I don't know how. Um, I mean, these two teams, this to me feels like a coin flip game uh, through and through. So um, we'll we'll see where this thing actually looks at. But again, please be sure to double check the status of Tyler Kolek before uh, before you you bet on this game. So if we're looking at this. Um, Let's go back and look at the lines here. So you can see Ken Palm again. We said he has this as a four point game. Uh, and across the board, you're seeing minus four and a half, four crates in. So that, that's pretty in line there. Oh, and you see DraftKings just went up to minus five. So depending on who you're looking at, um, you know, if you're using Ken Palm as your source of truth, none of these would be good EV bets. If you're looking to back market, I mean, we can go back, we can do an exercise here. So if we say that the, the spread is even five, let's say. And our line is minus four. Uh, you can see they are e without regression. It's still a negative EV bet. With regression, it certainly is. So, you know, for me, this screams kind of a stay away bet. I'm going to look at this from entertainment value. But again, if you believe that you have um, an edge here, definitely go through and look at it, and you know, at least try to you know, bet where your your money will go the furthest, right? So, uh, but again, market uh, crates in 77, 73 Ken and Palm prediction uh, minus four for Creighton there. All right, going on, Tennessee, Alabama. Now, this is going to be a great game. I cannot wait to watch. Um, this is going to be battling for first place in an SEC play. And if you all remember, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago where Alabama went to Tennessee and absolutely got dog walk. So this has a revenge factor at home written all over it. I'm not saying that's going to go into the play into the actual betting of it, but, you know, it, these, are, these are competitors and probably it's going to be on the line. So let's kind of hop into it. Look at here, Alabama. Look at that offense. I mean, this team is absolutely blistering. Um, so you can see there, um, they are the best offense in the SEC by far, and they are the best offense in the nation. They're the number one offense uh, per Ken Palm. So uh, no slouches there at all versus Tennessee. And as the thing as we got in use of seen over the last few years, especially Tennessee is one of the toughest defenses in the nation. You can see they're the definitely the number one defense in the SEC, fourth ranked overall in the country. So this is that classic immovable object meets unstoppable force. What's going to win out? We saw in round one, Tennessee absolutely used that defense to frustrate Alabama. Um, now, how much of that was the road environment? How much of that was this, that, or the other? I'm not sure, but Tennessee definitely had them figure out in game one. So can Alabama come back and adjust a game plan accordingly? We will see. So Ken Palm has, has a tight, tight game. 85-84 for Alabama as a one-point uh, victory here. Again, coming down here, you can see on the offensive side of the ball, Alabama shines at 1.28 points per possession versus Tennessee's 1.19. On the defensive side of the ball, that's where Tennessee takes over. And then we go down here to the effective uh, field goal percentage. This is where Alabama can absolutely separate itself from any other team in the nation. Uh, their offensive effective field goal percentage is 57.43%. Uh, that is definitely something to keep in mind there. Uh, versus uh, Tennessee, again, on the defensive end, this is where they shine, and they have 44.61 uh, uh, effective field goal percentage. Now, uh, again, I want to kind of go back and look at this real quick because when you look at this shooting matchup or the scoring, you know, kind of breakdown, offense versus defense, where are these teams actually ranked, give you a little bit more context there. So shooting the ball from the three-point line, Alabama is shooting at 38.1% clip from three-point. Uh, they're 30 or 13th in the nation. Tennessee defending the three point, they're 31.1 uh, percentage. So they are 41st in the nation in defending the three. So, again, out of 353 schools, you know, this is definitely two teams who are really good at doing what they do. All right. So, then looking at the turnover percentage, no surprise there on the defensive side of the ball. Tennessee is causing a little more turnovers uh, than Alabama. Rebounding the ball um, on the offensive end, edge goes Alabama. And on the defensive end, so can Alabama manufacture some second chance points? Time will tell. And then finally, getting to the line with the free throw rate, you can see uh, Alabama has the slight edge on the offensive end, while Tennessee has a slight edge on the defensive end. So what's going to happen there? Uh, again, this one, I, I do not and I cannot see this being another blowout. I know Tennessee kind of walked all over in the first time through, but I think the rules be reversed. It's going to be a tight game like we should have had in game one. But again, for the sake of betting, Let's take a look at the lines here. So, again, Kipom has Alabama as a minus one 
And you can see here, this line's already moving. So we have minus two and a half, minus three and a half at ESPN bet. So if you're looking to be an Alabama backer and you trust the Ken Palms number, uh, that, that, that ship has sailed from an EV standpoint. Uh, unless, again, you have a reason to believe uh, that Alabama really is more than a one-point favorite, uh, despite Ken Palm's model. Now, if you're looking to be a Tennessee backer, you know, can there be some value here? Now, it's kind of hard to see here on the screen, but you got plus three and a half for uh, Tennessee at ESPN Bet, but that's a minus one twenty. So that's a that's a an expensive line. So again, we can do a little bit of an experiment here. What's a better EV bet? Plus two and a half at minus one hundred five, or plus three and a half at minus one twenty. So. Let's go back here to our calculator and let's go through. And again, you can get this on our website at bullytheboard.com. So we have here minus two and a half at minus 105. You can see that that without regression is a 4.19% EV bet. If you do regress that, that's a negative 0.5% EV bet. And then if we go to three and a half for minus 120, though, you can see greater um, uh, uh, expected value on the non-regress line. So if you, if you just ignore the market altogether, say, market, I don't care what you think, um, you get a 6% EV uh, versus if you do care what the market thinks and you regress that line, you can see right here, the line regresses back uh, down to three, you get a negative 3.22% EV. So, um, you know, again, depends on, on how you want to live your life and how, how froggy you want to be. But if you're looking to back Tennessee, you might be able to get some value there. All right, last up, we have Gonzaga versus St. Mary's. And man, this is going to be a good game out in the West Coast. So, Looking at the matchup map, you can see Gonzaga here, best offense uh, in the West Coast Conference versus St. Mary's, best defense in the West Coast Conference. So again, something's got to give, and what is it going to be here? Now, Ken Palm has St. Mary's winning this by 272 to 70 predictive score. Um, St. Mary's did beat Gonzaga uh, by two points last time they played. Now, they had Joshua Jefferson in that game, who they have lost for the season. I think they played four or five games without him so far. Um, so it's not new news, but, you know, definitely something that's different between the last matchup and now. Now, I will say, you know, this has a lot of bragging rights on it. So St. Mary's, um, you know, not only are they undefeated in conference play, but they have the nation's longest active win streak at uh, 18 games. And so they've, they've already wrapped up sole possession of first place for the regular season title out in the West Coast Conference. So what's going to happen? I mean, this is definitely a um, a bragging rights game. And just to clarify, I think that uh, same race is a 16 game once you're getting us at 18. But um, nevertheless, you know, this is going to be a team that has a lot of pride in the line. Gonzaga has been the big dog for years now. So it's finally St. Mary's turn to, uh, to kind of flex their muscle. So I do not think this will be a lackluster game. I think there's a lot of of. Uh, of competitive hatred, if you will, going into this game. And so I expect the best in both teams. So kind of breaking this down again, you're not going to see any surprises here. On the offensive side, you have Gonzaga edging out St. Mary's. And then on the defensive side, you have St. Mary's edging out uh, Gonzaga here. But looking at these two teams, you know, they're, as you can see here from the matchup map, I mean, these two teams, um, you know, while they definitely have their strengths in different areas, they're not really that far apart in terms of what they do on both sides of the ball. So again, I think that's a big reason why this is coming down. This that's a two point predicted game, um, and not a blowout one way or the other. So um, one thing I want to highlight again, just going through the the four factors here, is you see here that one of the, the places where there could be a little bit of advantage is going to be St. Mary's on the offensive glass, getting those second chance points because of offensive rebounding at thirty eight and a half percent versus. Uh, Gonzaga's thirty four point one eight, and then on the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, limiting. Um, uh, St. Mary's second chance points and St. Mary's doing the same from Gonzaga. So again, I mean, these two teams, are, this is going to be a hard fought knuckle uh, battle. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens here. And again, this is another example. If you look up at the Ken Palm rank of, even though the top 25 has St. Mary's as the higher ranked team, Ken Palm has Gonzaga as a higher ranked team in his system. So um, we'll see, but it's going to be a, a pretty close game. So again, St. Mary's is a two point favorite. And if we look at the lines right now, you can see down here you have two and a halves uh, across the board, and then looks like there's a minus three at Bet Rivers for 
uh, or I guess a plus three, uh, if you look in the back in Zaga at Rivers, but across the board it seems to be consensus at, uh, well, uh, all the retail books are caught up, let's say. If you look over at, at the market maker books, there seems to be consensus at minus two and a half. And we all know the retail books just copy the market maker books. And so um, you don't have any slow lines or lagging lines or any kind of uh, bookmakers or um, retail books sleeping, if you will. So minus two and a half, plus two and a half. Again, if you're looking at the EV of there, if you're looking at back in Zaga at two and a half, when the model prediction is two uh, at a minus 110 odds rate, you can see there that's a negative 1.67% EV. So <clears throat> again, not a great EV bet. So, let's, so unless you are convinced otherwise that this spread should be higher than two, um, you know, it, it may not be the best bet uh, in terms of long term. But uh, again, go through uh, whatever source you use. Keep an eye on the line movement. See if these things move into your favor um, and then be able to snatch a value if you can. So. All right. With that being said, that is the breakdown here. If you enjoyed that, please let us know by giving us a like and a comment and a subscribe. If you want to see us do more of this again, let us know. We're just kind of messing around um, with these kind of breakdowns. We use this personally in our betting, so figured it'd be nice to share with you all. But uh, again, let us know. If we don't hear back, we'll probably just kind of you know try something different next time. But if you want to see these matchups or any other matchup, you know, again, feel free to comment and let us know your feedback. And as always, good luck on your bets out there, and hope you have a hell of a Saturday. All right, till next time.